Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to run an experiment. You see, I've been working hard to come up with a way to make cheap and easy grass clumps. Cheap and easy grass clumps. Cheap being the operative term here. So, follow along with me as I run my test, and we'll see what result we can get. Hopefully, in the end, we can get some decent grass clumps. Grass clumps and bushes have long been a favorite of model builders. They come in an array of colors and designs and they just look great. They add realism and variety and interest. They're at home in terrain and also on miniature basis. To many, including me, they are an important ingredient in almost any model build. For me, they are so essential that I have a whole rolling cart on hand with many options, and I'm always replenishing them to keep a variety in stock. The downside of grass and bush clumps, as you can imagine, is cost. If you are a prolific builder, the cost adds up and sometimes you just can't find what you want. There are ways to make your own. You can use a stra static grass applicator, but sometimes static grass is expensive and it's hard to find. One of the earliest and also most popular videos on my channel showed my homebrew method for building grass clumps from hot glue and twine. This method has always been great if you want small amounts of clumps, but lately my model building ambitions have outstripped this method. So I got down to work theorizing a new method that builds on the usefulness of twine and other cheap fibers to make the best grass and bush clumps for basically no cost at all. This video follows along with the process to show how this experiment works out. Let's take a look. To start with, you need some fibrous material, like this stuff from Woodland Scenics, or if you wanna go really cheap, but still really good, you can get some twine from the dollar store. You need some white glue or a Mod Podge. You need a marker. Masking tape, sharp pair of scissors, a bamboo skewer or toothpick. The nail's not a bad idea. You need some parchment paper or wax paper for baking. A fairly large sheet of it, larger the better. Either a sharp craft knife, or a hot foam knife, or both. And if you want to paint it, which isn't required, some airbrush paints in various natural tones, an airbrush. Oh, plus, it's not a bad idea, to have some clamshell packaging. Just like the packaging that the grass clumps themselves come in, although generally the thinner the packaging, the better. To start with, I take out the clamshell packaging and using the hot foam knife, I start cutting holes into the top, or rather sort of melting holes into the top. What I want to do is create a basic template for the size and shape of each grass clump. I can fit a good number of them, like 10 or 15, into the top of each packaging shell. Alternatively, if you don't have a hot foam cutter, you can simply cut these template holes out with a craft knife. Now in preparation of building the tufts, I take out the wax paper and with my masking tape, I tape it down to the surface of a table so that it doesn't slide around. I take my newly created templates, lay them over top of the wax paper, 
mark the edges so I know exactly where the template belongs, and then with my marker, I poke it down through the holes to mark the spots where the grass clumps will be inserted. Taking the template away, I now get out either my toothpick, bamboo skewer, or nail, and I use that to transfer some Mod Podge onto the top of the table. I put the template back over top, make sure the holes line up with the marks and the glue on the paper, and then tape the template down. Getting out my fibrous material, in this case either twine or long grass by Woodland Scenics, I insert it down through the hole in the top of the template and into the glue. The template holds the grass upright while it sits in the glue to dry. Now I leave this to dry overnight. It's now the next morning and checking to see that everything is dried, I go ahead and remove the templates. I was pleased to see that most of the grass clumps survived. I lost three or four in the process where the fibers didn't stick correctly into the glue, but by far the vast majority of them took just fine. With the templates off, I get out my scissors and begin trimming and pruning them down to size. I shape them as I see fit for the different scales of terrain or the different purposes I'm going to use them for. At this point I can now go in and cut the wax paper into strips, leaving the bush clumps adhered to the top. This will make it easier for me to paint them. Taking it to my airbrush station, I tape the strips down so they don't blow away, and then I go in and begin spraying them down with different colors. I spray some with greens, and some with a brownie red kind of rust tone. Now we come to an optional step. It's possible to make these into flowers if you have the right components. The best thing to use is a little bit of crushed foam flock. You can get this stuff in bright colors like red and yellow and even purples from different craft stores. I happen to have some leftover yellow from an earlier diorama I was making that was set in the fall. So taking this flock, I apply it to the top of a couple of the bushes. I do this by spraying the bushes down with some hairspray and then just go ahead and sprinkle it on. Afterwards, I hit each bush with another quick spray from the hairspray to set everything up. That's really all it takes and the results are great. So that brings us to the end of my experiment and I think it went pretty well. In the end, I ended up with several sheets of different colors of bushes and grass. These being mainly made from twine, basically cost nothing. None of the materials that you need are particularly technical, and you can make do with either Mod Podge or with white glue. I did use an airbrush, but it is possible to color the clumps yourself by working some acrylic inks or paints into the fiber with your fingers or with an eyedropper. When it comes to installing these, it's pretty straightforward. Put your glue down on your base where you want your clump to go, peel your clump off the wax paper, stick it down into the glue, you can lay some more glue around the grass clump and sprinkle it with some static grass to conceal the edges, if you think that's necessary. Oh yeah, and since this experiment seems to be a success, I put the newly made templates and the twine and the glue on the bottom shelf of my terrain cart. It'll sit there until I need to make more in the future, where I'm sure it will become very useful. That's it for this episode. I hope you liked watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember that Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. If you would like to assist with the production, please consider joining me on Patreon. 
I have many levels for my Patreons to subscribe to. You can get access to the STL files I use, and even receive painting lessons or terrain. If Patreon's not your thing, then how about you head over to my Etsy store. Any purchases you might make help support the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Remember to subscribe, and as always, remember to keep building life in miniature.